welcome to another edition of The Outpost. The Outpost. <laughs> My name is Mike Hurt and... I'm Adam Alexander. Yes, and The Outpost, the goal, it's uh, sponsored by DAV Chapter 17 and uh, uh, Friends of uh, Oshkosh Community Media. What, what the show is all about is with being with the Disabled Americans, uh, Veterans, DAV Chapter 17, uh, this show provides an opportunity to showcase various veterans in the community and their service because I always like to say every every veteran is a slice of American history and every veteran has a story and it's important to share that. Um, the other thing is you get a, a chance to learn about the mission of DAV, especially in the greater Oshkosh area and some of the things we do. Now, today we have a little bit of a different slant, but this is, I'll tell you, Adam, I just I almost couldn't sleep last night just thinking about <laughs> today's show. I'm so excited by it. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. And we have with us today, we have uh, John Vonderloom, correct? Yes. And John is with the United Veterans Honor Guard. And we have, this is your second appearance on the show, but we have Dwayne Cannon. And Dwayne, you are the president of the Oshkosh Patriotic Council. Yes. What we're going to be taking a look at is with the disabled American veterans, uh, we, we do not have an honor guard per se uh, in the city or actually uh, I think beyond Green Bay I don't know of any other um, areas in the state that has one but what happens is a lot of people get involved a lot of DAV members get involved with United Veterans Honor Guard and John will be talking about that mission a little bit and for many of you viewers that when it is uh, Memorial Day weekend that Monday morning um, you will uh, bring out your, your lawn chair and you'll go out to the procession route and you're guaranteed at a certain time uh, that uh, people marching for the Memorial Day procession will show up. How does that happen? Well, we have what's called an Oshkosh Patriotic Council and Duane is going to be able to share how that works and what actually occurs is all the different groups do a rotation uh, through the Patriotic Council in terms of the leadership and of which DAV is a member of that as well. So with that, Adam, all I will right. turn things over to you and right. you want to ex First of all, more things. Dwayne, why don't you just give us a quick rundown on your military history and how you got into the veteran service organizations. Okay, I uh, joined the United States Air Force on September 23rd, 1966, shortly after high school. I served four years and I went to uh, Karat, Thailand during the Vietnam War, where I worked on some F-105s and F-4s dealing with air conditioning, pressurization, and oxygen on them. And I was discharged on September 22nd, 1970. Okay. And Do we, oh, there we got some pictures popping up. <laughs> Anything you want to say about any of the pictures? Well, those are some of the squadrons that was at my air base uh, at the 3A Tackle Fire Wing in Karat, Thailand, at the Royal Thai Air Force Base. And Bob Hope Christmas Show, the uh, Dean Martin with the, and the Gold Diggers, and Anne Margaret. And that was one of the Thai soldiers uh, that was heading off to Vietnam. And a lot of the people, the families, would put these flower leaves on. Some had a lot of them, some had only a few, some didn't have any at all. Mm. There must be at least a good thousand uh, Thai soldiers going to Vietnam. There's someone right now. And John, why don't you give us a little bit about your military background? Um, I was uh, in the Army for uh, three years. I went in in May of 65, got out May of 68. I uh, spent 19 months in Korea on the 38th parallel in the 7th Division. And uh, I went over as a tanker uh, operator, tank operator. And when I uh, arrived, for some reason, I became a military police. And that's how I spent the remainder of my time uh, in the service. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've always been curious, what was that like there in Korea? I mean, it, it was, I mean, I, I remember, was that during the time period where the, wasn't it a captain went to chop down a tree and we almost came to World War III? I don't know if, <laughs> if, if, if that was before or after, but Korea could be pretty dicey. It, it was dicey, and on the post that I was at, they uh, actually, uh, they trained the uh, Tigers, uh, Korean Iraq soldiers, and the uh, 
uh, see the Tigers, and there was one other division. I forget exactly what their name was. And uh, they went over, of course, to uh, Vietnam, and they were bad. For every one of the enemy they killed over there, they would cut off the ear and wear it in a necklace. It was just unbelievable. Wow. And the Westmoreland actually took a couple of days and came to our post so that he could view the, it was the White Horse and the Tiger Division, and he wanted to see how they were being trained over there, and uh, that was quite impressive. Plus, uh, at the particular time, President Johnston and Dean Rusk also came to our post, and uh, security was unbelievable. Where we were stationed on the 38th parallel, you could drive about three or four miles more to the north. You could visually see the North's artillery in the hills. And for the people who are wondering what it looked like, I know that most everyone watching has one time or another seen MASH. And the opening of MASH where it shows the mountains and stuff is pretty, pretty close to the area that we was in. In fact, we, John Boo, where MASH was allegedly filmed was 15 miles south of me. And they could wear civilian clothes and do stuff we could not. No civilian clothes and everything was on lockdown. So that's how I spent my time. Well, well. Um, okay. We'll fast forward a couple of years and talk about a little what you're doing today with the uh, Honor Guard. Well, I belong to United Veterans Honor Guard in Oshkosh. We were established in 2003 by gentlemen mm -hmm. that belonged to the different service, service organizations. And the reason that they formed this United Veterans Honor Guard is the Legion, uh, Marine Corps League, the DAV and stuff, it got to the point where they couldn't muster enough people to do honors for military funerals. So the different entities got together, they met and decided to form United Veterans Honor Guard. And uh, <clears throat> basically uh, how we do the funerals is uh, funeral homes notify uh, Union Grove and Uni Union Grove sends a uh, email to Dennis Cartwright or myself and at that time we get the squads together for that particular date and stuff and uh, that's how it happens, that we get the honors to do uh, the funerals. And <clears throat> I have uh, right now 48 active members and I have uh, seven inactive. And the inactive are usually somebody may be on vacation or because of health uh, reasons uh, that they can't perform at that time. And as of late, there's times that we do two to three funerals a day. Wow. Last year we did 118. And this year, uh, as of uh, yesterday, we were at 93. And uh, <clears throat> out of the 93, there's uh, uh, 90 actual funerals. Three were other things that we do in the year, parades or whatever. And uh, that's how we do that. So <clears throat> what do we get for doing a funeral? Um, the state of Wisconsin sends us $50 per funeral. And the people that volunteer uh, to do this, they uh, are non-paid. They're strictly volunteers. So their travel time or whatever it be, it's, it's when they can. And I've got members that can only uh, perform on weekends. I've got members that can only be after 5 o'clock. And we make it work. But we're always looking for new members. And to be a member, uh, United Veterans Honor Guard, um, you have to belong to one of the service organizations in the area. And we meet on the fourth, um, correction, on the second Wednesday of each month out at the Marine Corps League uh, on A north of Oshkosh at 6.30 in the evening. So if you really wonder what we're about, come on out and see us, take a look at what we do at Fellowship. And we have uh, both male and female, and they do a wonderful job. I mean, uh, Union Grove tells us that we're one of the top honor guards in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, I believe that. Of all the organizations I belong to, and I belong to several, uh, these are my brother and sisters, and they just do a fantastic job. And it's our honor to be able to do what we can for that veteran that served. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, it's, it's incredibly important what you do because you literally provide that that final act of respect to the to the service member to that veteran and uh, I just I, I you know because the passage of time have been to uh, quite a few funerals in my day 
And I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, when you go to a service and the United Veterans Honor Guard always looks sharp and always looks good. And, and I can, and I've heard from the families that they are so appreciative when you are there and, and what you do at, uh, it is just incredible. I mean, you really touch the heart of people. There was a couple of times for the funerals at the cemetery, the family would ask if the, we had a chaplain, if they could do a, a service. So we did that a couple of times already. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, usually the branch of service sends at least two people and they do the flags and we're in charge of the uh, firing and bugle and uh, presentation afterwards with our shells and a coin that we had designed for a United Veterans Honor Guard. And Duane is uh, one of our do you, do you coin great members. Huh? Do you have a coin with you by chance? I do not, you do. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I, this was just one of those impromptu things. Yeah. You know, we're not at the yeah. bar right now, so we're safe. So. Yeah. That's this is one of our coins. Except for it's supposed to be gold, but I've had it for so many years. Yeah. Okay. So then, so then what will happen is then um, at the conclusion of the service, then a family member will, will get one of these Who's coins? Who's ever designated by the family will get the shells that we used that day along with one of those coins. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it probably looks great in the shadow yeah. box. The state uh, provides us with one, but it, it just didn't. It just didn't signify who we are. Cut the mustard. And so that's correct. And so we wanted something to be more personalized for the families. Excellent. And um, a lot of the families are so appreciative that, um, I'm sure, yeah. you know, for, for what we do. And they can put the deceased name on the back of the coin, too. Yeah. yeah. And some of them we've seen even have them embedded in the gravestones. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's... Wow. It's outstanding. Yeah. So... <clears throat> And the funeral homes are, are very good with us because when we get called and we have more than one, so, sometimes so they back it the, up. What would be an average timeline of, you know, let's say somebody passes away on a Monday, when would you get called? When do you, I guess, do you practice beforehand or how often does the unit practice? I mean, how does that all work? What's the mechanics to it? So the funeral home is notified. Immediately, they check to see if he's a veteran and has a honorable dishonor, uh, DD-214. Okay. Upon completion of that verification, they notify Union Grove immediately. Union Grove then sends Dennis and myself an email stating, can you do this funeral? And so we call them right away and say, yes, we will do this funeral. And from that point on, then Dennis does most of the calling. Can you do this? This is a time. Show up time is 15 minutes prior to when the funeral is, we let them know whether it's a casket or whether it's a cremation. And even though we do so many funerals, it's very personable to us. We take everyone very serious. Mm -hmm. And for some of the younger service members, uh, Saudi, Afghanistan, um, that we do those uh, in particular are, are just so much more uh, some of my commanders and, and men at times, uh, they have to fight tears back because we just can't understand how people so young die. And uh, we're so appreciative of everything that they have yeah. done for us. And we so. do the funerals no matter what the weather is like. It could be hot, cold, raining, snow. Yes. We are still out there to present the honors to the family. Wow. We do them at their homes. We've done them at taverns. Uh, with COVID-19, because everything was kind of shut down, there was a lot of cremations. Uh, people can't get here for a couple of months. Uh, whenever they want it is when we're going to do it. And the area that we serve basically is uh, Amro, Winnie County, and the Oshkosh area. I believe Nina does have an honor guard, but we have covered for them at numerous times. And uh, we don't go down to Fond du Lac. I think the area that we're doing, we're very satisfied with, and because we do so many funerals, I think it's asking a little bit too much for our guys to go way out in the bomb. Nina Menashe area has contacted us when they've had something going on, and we have been up there to do funerals for them. And I know that Appleton's got an honor guard, but for whatever reason, they want us to come up there. And so we put together a thing. 
our officers, we have a president, which is Butch Keel, and a vice president is Jerry Pomerani, and oh, yeah. so many people know Jerry does a wonderful job. And uh, David Steiner is the, uh, and everybody knows Steiny in the area, he's our treasure quartermaster. And uh, I'm the, uh, the uh, secretary, and Dwayne is on the board, and he's also our local prayer giver, chaplain. chaplain. And mm -hmm. he sends out letters to our members to the sick and stuff like that. And uh, we're just uh, happy to be able to provide the services we do for your area here in Oshkosh. So what, okay. Now, there are people that are watching this show and they're like, there are veterans that are saying, I want to be involved with the United Veterans Honor Guard. So let's say everything is good to go. They're with a veteran service organization. What exactly is the training? I mean, how, how does someone decide what they're going to do and how it works? And well, they should come out to one of our meetings on the second Wednesday of each month. And at that time, they kind of see what our meeting is and stuff and if they're kind of interested or want to join and decide that and we've had members right on the spot we'll start the training that evening and uh, we'll do the weapons the formations and uh, it, it's not hard it's been a long time since basic training when i did not about face well <laughs> I, I like to poke fun on them because uh, it's a little hard to train some of the Air Force guys. They never had a march very much, <laughs> but guys like Nobody's Dwayne, Dwayne is one of our, he, he does, uh, you know, it's probably hard, 30 to, to 40 funerals in, a year himself. Hard to get golf carts in formation. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the guys go through that, and we fold the flag. Uh, they have to learn how to do that, and they have to learn how to march, and they have to learn how to do the different moves with the, uh, with the weapon, which is not difficult. And uh, we go through that three or four times, and after they complete that uh, and we're satisfied, then we order the uniforms. We don't order the uniforms first because some people don't want it. Then they try it out and say, maybe this is more than I can do, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. But uh, we got some new members last month again. In fact, a gentleman from uh, Appleton wants to come down and be involved with us. And, and they get a certificate it. once they are Qualified, certified, certified, certified mm -hmm. and, and the triangle flag pin for the honor guard. Yeah, these pins that you see right here mm -hmm. is once you can see that, then you know that you're certified to do the. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. But um, Norm Schertz, who is a retired Marine uh, sergeant, he basically does a, a majority of our training for us out there, at, uh, and we let him know ahead of time. But um, if you're not comfortable, you're not comfortable. But a majority of the guys that go through that, uh, we try to make it as easy as we can, and they come and they view how we do things before they are involved. And then before each funeral, uh, we go out and we run through what we're doing for the day just as a practice so that we look sharp. Excellent. Yeah. Fire on fire. <laughs> so what, um, now what, what type of weapons do you have right now that you use for your honor guard? Well, they're the old M M1. M1s. Ryan. Yeah, and um, now isn't there, isn't there some interesting story with uh, the late Rosemary Pitts with uh, obtaining those weapons? I seem to recall. Rosemary was one of our members, and God bless her. She uh, she was a, she she was was a there when I got for the oh, veterans community. Yes, she did a wonderful job for us. When she passed, uh, she left us money to buy our own weapons. We were using the VFWs at the time, or AMVETS. AMVETS yeah. I'm sorry, and anyhow, we have our own weapons. And uh, on top of that, she even left us a couple dollars for uniforms. All right. So, but uh, we used a wonderful sense of humor she yeah. had. But uh, we have uh, the VFW, the AMVETS, and our own weapons today. So sometimes we have runovers where we need different guys to pick up weapons. We can't be at the same place two or three times, you know. So we got enough weapons to go around. And along with that, uh, Armour Legion has weapons, and we've had to use theirs also. Oh, okay. So, yeah. But now, 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 steering off a little bit, uh, the Oshkosh Patriotic Council, it's, it's like I, I just was sharing at the beginning, is that we have, you know, the, you know, Memorial Day procession that occurs. We have Veterans Day. We have, you know, uh, these events that happen. But yet there's a lot of planning, and, and I don't know how many people are aware of the uh, Oshkosh Patriotic Council. And Dwayne, if uh, this great opportunity uh, for you to be able to share what the Patriotic Oshkosh Patriotic Council does, 
you know, from a DAV standpoint, we are a member of that council, and and uh, if you could kind of share a little bit with us. Okay. Uh, every two years, the rotation goes from one veteran organization to another, and this time it's the Vienna Veterans of America that has it for two years, and we are in charge of the Memorial Day procession and the program, and also for the Veterans Day program. Uh, for Memorial Day procession, uh, we try to find a speaker for the program, but the procession itself is not a parade. It is and, to and a, a good point. What is the difference between a procession and a, a parade? The procession is to honor those that have served our country and gave their lives for our country. And a parade, they hand out candy, have floats, but uh, we are there to honor the deceased veterans for serving our country. Well, and that's one of the things that always impressed me with um, the Memorial Day procession is that uh, you're not going to see elected officials there, and uh, you're not going to see candy being handed out. You're not going to see, uh, you know, floats, anything like that. No. It's, it's it's literally, as you're saying, it's it, when you look at the origins of Memorial Day, I mean, it's literally almost a, a, a funeral procession going to the cemetery. Correct. Uh, in fact, uh, one year we had four uh, deceased veterans yeah. that were unclaimed and the funeral home uh, person bills had a hearse in there with, with the uh, the flags and the remains and we had a, a regular service at uh, Riverside Cemetery last year uh, Fish and Bills also had the hearse in there and uh, to re remind the people what this per procession is it's not a parade it's to honor those that were, were deceased at the beginning of the day they go to the South Park Veterans Memorial yeah. to read the names that's on the wall. And then from there, there's another ceremony, which is at uh, Riverside, uh, just off of Main Street, where they do a service there to remind the people of those that were uh, killed and buried at sea. Then we have the Memorial Day procession, and it, we end up at Riverside Cemetery, where we have a program uh, where the VFW band plays the dirge and the veteran organizations marches in with their colors. And then usually the, the honor guard will do the rifle salute. Every year we have a different speaker. We do the uh, reading of the Gettysburg Address and Logan's Order. Uh, the Memorial Day procession started, I believe, in uh, 1897. Let me check. Uh, 1871, the Memorial Day wow. procession started, but it wasn't until 1940 when the Oshkosh mayor uh, had the Patriotic Council organized to be in charge of it. And well, there's, there's, you know, the, the thing I think that's, that's really kind of neat that happens with the Patriotic Council is that there's a lot of details that occur that people don't see, I mean, you know, from mapping out the parade route, procession, get, get, procession excuse me, procession, um, getting, you know, getting approval by uh, committees within city government, um, there's a lot to it. Yeah, the city is in charge of it, and we are just though there to help get it organized and to get it going. Yeah, but, uh, and then, you know, I think of, and too, you know, from once you get to the cemetery, it, you know, from getting the proper speakers, you know, and getting all the, uh, every everything set up there, it's an amazing amount of work. Yeah, and then as far as reading of the Logan's Order, it started in 1868 by General John Logan from the headquarters of the Grand Army of the Republic in Washington, D.C. on May 5th, uh, 1868, but it started uh, for Memorial Day on the 30th of May. So every Memorial Day, the Logan's Order is read. It is to remember th those that from the Civil War and now into the future, they lay flowers at the graves of those that are deceased. 
Now, now at this time, the, we're recording this show uh, in the latter part of September, so naturally you've got to be thinking about uh, Veterans Day. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Veterans Day 2022, what the game plan is, what we're looking at? Okay, this year we have Colonel uh, David Stone, he's a uh, retired uh, officer for the United States Air Force. Uh, he was a satellite operator, he's also a space weapon officer uh, pertaining to the no-fly zone in northern Iraq during the war. He commanded uh, the 10th Missile Squadron and he served in the Pentagon as the Deputy Chief of the Nuclear Operation Division, plus he also wrote speeches for some four-star generals. Uh, his last duty assignment was with NATO pertaining to 32 countries uh, pertaining to their uh, defense plan. And this year, uh, we will be meeting once again at the American Legion Post 70 over at uh, 1332 Spruce Street, right in the corner of Congress and Spruce. Every year, we also lay two wreaths at the courthouse. On uh, the courthouse, there are four plaques, and those plaques mm -hmm. are from those that served in Winnebago County from World War I and they get placed there in the morning and then in the evening they are taken down. A good point, what is the difference between let's say Memorial Day, you know, you go back to the Civil War, General John Logan, but yet, you know, Veterans Day, just a little, it's a little bit different with its startup. Yeah, Veterans Day is to honor all those that s served our country or are still serving our country. And uh, there's a big difference. Uh, we must never forget the price of freedom. It costs lives. But then we have others right now that are serving or have served that are proud to, to have served our country, and we, we honor them on Veterans Day. Okay. And so for the, for the public to be aware, Veterans Day is the perfect day to come up to that, that soldier, sailor, airman, uh, Marine Corps, and veteran and say, thank you for your service. Thank you for what you did. Yes. But Memorial Day is not really a thank you for your service. Memorial Day is about those who made the ultimate it's sacrifice. It's not happy Memorial Day. Yep. There's nothing happy about it because there is lives that were lost. And if anybody is interested for our Veterans Day program, it is open to the public. And so we'll have plenty of room at the American Legion Post for the seating. And, and definitely a lot warmer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we used to hold it at the uh, Winnebago County uh, uh, Courthouse, yes. and you never, we could have spring-like temperatures, and I can remember a time or two where we froze. So yes. uh, I will say having it at the American Legion building is definitely a lot warmer than what it was. So yeah. how often does the Patriotic Council meet? Uh, it varies. Uh, for the Veterans Day program, we we'll, might meet uh, two months before, or maybe three. The Memorial Day procession will meet uh, maybe starting in February and finish up in May. It depends on uh, finding a speaker. Uh, that's the biggest problem. But uh, this year I was able to find this Colonel Stone and he was willing to speak so I got him this summer. So then we divide the responsibilities up with the other organizations to do the different parts of the program. So just if, about a minute or so left. Oh, okay. Got any final so thoughts? Just just a real quick one. So if people are wanting to attend the Veterans Day service, date, time, place, location. It is at 1045 at the American Legion Post, 70 on the corner of Spruce and Congress. And just uh, be there to, to honor those that are still serving our country. All right. Thank you for joining us on this month's edition of The Outpost. We'll see you next month.